the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. And it's funny, you know, I really didn't learn that until I got into the Church of God in Christ. But it's true. Just like in our, our ways of saying yes to God, you know, and I, I have to admit, and Tommy knows this, I didn't have a good time in the Church of God in Christ. I didn't have a good time because when I brought Jesus into my life, there was such a freedom that happened and there was such a knowing of his presence. And, and I didn't know anything about church. I didn't know anything about religion. I didn't know anything about any of that stuff. All I knew about was Jesus in the book. He came alive for me in the book. As I read the pages, he just came into my room one night. And you'll learn that in the devotional on <laughs> about who's the, who's the father. And I, I tell you, we're going to talk a little bit about the devotionals tonight and building blocks of faith, the building blocks of faith, the building blocks. I know a lot of people don't think that you have to build that th- type of thing, but you do. You have to build this thing. You can't, you can't just come in and get saved one day and think everything is cool. It's not. It's a building. It's a working. It's a, it's, a, it's a constant building upon line upon line, precept upon precept, building that thing up in your heart, building it up in your mind, building it up in your, in your memories and in your heart so that when times hit, because they will hit, when times begin to get hard and things, things aren't going the way we thought they should go, then we have something to pull from. Right. Yeah. We have something to, to stand upon yeah. and know that I am safe in his arms. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. And, and, and we literally sang that song every Sunday. And, I, I, you know, and everybody wasn't the same, but it just, it just... Seemed like it. It just seemed like everybody was the same. Because when you saw corruption or you saw people not being what they said they were or, or whatever, you began to just lump it into a whole big group. And that's not fair. Because, because you know, Tommy would tell me about people uh, that was in the Church of God in Christ that he adored, that he, that he respected, and that he... he he, he looked up to because of their love for God, you know? And I, I didn't get that, per se. I, di- I, di- I didn't really find anybody within that group that I, that, I, that I looked at and said, wow, you know, I, I admire their tenacity and their love for God and their adoration, and I, I just never found that. But when I began, when I, when, when, when I began to find a level of worship that was different, and, and I listened to the words, it just melted me. It just, I don't know, I, I fought it for so long because I never heard such music before. I never heard it like that before. I never heard, I never heard music like that before. And, and then I began to... I don't know, I just, God began to do something again in my heart. It was like I was being born again. And, and I just realized that once again I was missing something that was not in my life and I needed him again. And, and that, that's, you know, we're going to go through some building blocks of faith that I'm going to go through with my devotionals on Wednesday, but I'm going to give you a little preview of what, you know, I'm going to be talking about. And the first one, the first building block is that something that we have to do, and that's renew our minds. You know... Once I began to look again at the word, because what happened was I think I began to look at people more than I began to see the word. I began to allow them to define me instead of what God said about me. 
And, and that's not how God intended it. God never intended it for you to get into a church and allow them to kind of mold you and make you into this, into whatever they think is a good Christian. Right, right. <laughs> or they think that is a, you know, the way you're supposed to do it. The, God intended for you to look at the word and, and, and allow him to mold you into what he called you to be. Because he called each one of us to do something different. He called us to, 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 to be in different areas, to do different things. To, he gave us different talents, different abilities, different, different gifts, and uh, all these different things that we have as people. He gave it to us so that we can become what he intended for us to be, not what we intend to be or anybody else wants us to be. Like mama and daddy can tell you that you're this, but that might not be true. What did God say about you? Right. And that's the renewing of the mind. Yes. Let's go. Um, I'm going to go to Romans 12 and 2. Well, actually, 1 and 2. And it's out of the Message Bible. And it says, there, so here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you could do for him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. God intends to work from the inside out. God does not change you because you dress a certain way. God does not change you because... You don't wear any makeup, and you hair, wear your hair in a bun. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That, that's, not, that's, not, that's not God. That is man forming you to make you think that's the way it looks to be mature and to look Christian. <laughs> to look Christian, you know? And that's, it's just not the truth. You let God form you. And let God tell you how, what, what uh, modesty looks like. Right, 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 right. <laughs> what does a modest apparel look like? He'll tell you. He'll let you know. He'll let you know what, how you're supposed to wear your hair and how you're supposed to, because all you got to do is ask, ask him. Talk to him. But everybody's not the same. Everybody's religion or the way they think about God is not the same. If God doesn't condemn you, don't let anybody else condemn you. This is a renewing of our mind tonight. A renewing of the way we think about things because it's so easy to get dragged into a way of thinking that men have told you this is the way it has to be in order for you to live out your life. And it's just not the truth. You live it the way God intended for you to live it. And you interpret it the way God interprets it to you. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Right, right. Amen. I, sh I shouldn't be coming to you and telling you what you can, how you should wear your hair or how you should be dressing and how you should be this. There is a modest way of dressing. Come on, we're not going to have, you know, personal stuff. <laughs> personal stuff. You, we're not going to, well, come on. That only makes sense. That's, 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 just, that's just common sense that we're not going to dress a certain kind of way. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So, I mean, all right. Yeah. <laughs> the outside will never change until the inside changes. That's right. yeah. Until you truly come to a place where you really understand who you are in Christ and who he's called you to be on the inside. And the only way the inside changes is with your time spent with him on an intimate level. 
I'm not talking about just reading a verse right. on the run. I'm not talking about reading uh, the whole book of, of John or the whole book of whatever and thinking, phew, I've accomplished so much. It's that wonderful, intimate time of just talking back and forth. I know you think you're talking to yourself. I know you think you're a little crazy, but you're not. And when you hear the voice of God and you begin to converse with him, you're not crazy. God really does talk to you. God really does spend time with you. God does come and he ministers to your heart. And you can literally say, it's so funny. We have prayer group uh, on the first and third Mondays. <laughs> and Cynthia Fisher will stop and go, uh-huh, what? What'd you say, God? Okay, what'd you say? Okay, all right. Oh, okay. Well, this, okay, this is what he said. Blah, 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 blah. And then we're like, all right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I, I love people that form that kind of relationship with God because they've taken time. They worked at this thing. This doesn't, this doesn't come just because you want it. This comes, it comes because you really take the time and the effort to, to, to get, get to the right place with God. Thank you. Am I modest? Okay. <laughs> Not showing too much. <laughs> and God, <laughs> forming well, well formed maturity in you. Why do you need to be mature? Why do you need to be mature? Because people are looking at you. People are looking at your life, whether you think so or not. Your family's looking at your life. Your children are looking at your life. Your, the, your neighbors are looking at your life. Everybody's looking at your life. People in Walmart looking at your, at your life. Pastor Tommy, people in Walmart are looking at your life. <laughs> if you always look like a sour puss, guess what? I don't, they don't want it. They don't want, they don't want your guy. Come on. Who wants a guy like that? <laughs> if you look, if you, if, if you, if you are a short fuse and you go off on somebody at Walmart or a, a car to cut you off or whatever, come on. Don't nobody want, want that kind of God. They don't want the God that's on the inside of you. We are a light to the world. We are a representation of God. We are the salt of the earth. We are the ones that people look to for guidance and for direction, and they're looking for that maturity. But it takes time to become mature. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes, it takes, it takes time. I can't say uh, time enough. Because everybody wants to rush this thing. Everybody wants to, wants to be mature tomorrow, and they just got saved today. And they want to tell the world about Jesus, but they have not gone through what it takes to become really mature in this thing. And come on, if you go out there, you get beat up, you're going to get mature. <laughs> you're going to get mature probably quicker than you intended to get mature. Because somebody's going to beat you up and, and, and throw you in the corner, throw you in a ditch, and say, see ya. Amen. You know, and as a shepherd, that's why we're going to have the minister's class start again in June. Because there are people in this room that are called to be ministers of the gospel, that are called to be of the five-fold ministry. But it takes a mature individual to understand the calling that it takes to become the fivefold. The honor and the, the respect that should be given to, that, to, those, to those people, is, is, it, 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 it's gone by the wayside. And it breaks my heart every time I, I see the church the way it is today because I know that God never intended for it to be that way. God never for it intended for a pastor to be so disrespected and so cast in, in, in the shadows 
instead of a person that is understood to be the shepherd and the, and the one that people look to for guidance and for direction and for teach me how to be mature, teach me how to, how to do this thing, teach me how to be successful, teach me how to be this. That's what a pastor is called to do. And I realize that people have abused it, but the news has made it just, just, just blew it up so much that every church now is just heresy and horrible and, and, and every pastor is, 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 is living a lie and, and every congregant is a hypocrite. So it's not the truth, but the devil is a It's just who he is, and that's what he does, and that's what he does to the world. He, he, he lies to the world, and, the, and they believe the lie, but we can't believe the lie. We can't believe the lie. If we are a part of a church and if we are part of something, then we have to respect the evangelist and respect the apostle and respect the ones that are called to ministry because it's hard work. Man. People don't care if they step on your heart and keep on walking. They don't care. They don't care. But we're called to be the mature ones, right? Amen. Amen. Who are you? That's the next building block. Who am I? Who am I in this world? Do you know how many people are searching every day to find out who they are in Christ? No, 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 no. Just who they are. Just who they are. Matter of fact, once you know who you are in Christ, man, you got it. But even then, there are people within the church who are, who, who, who are supposed to know who they are in Christ, and they don't. But guess what? It's in the book. It's in the book. First, first Peter 2 and, 2 and 9. But you are a chosen generation. Isn't that cool? That, that, that even though I wasn't a Jew, I was chosen by God's hand. I was adopted into a family for eternity. For eternity. From the moment I gave my heart to Jesus, he took me in. But you know what? Even then, he knew me. Even before that, he knew me in the belly, before I was in the belly of my mother's womb. He knew me. He knew me. He knew you. He knew you. He knew you. That's the renewing of the mind. That's the renewing of the mind, understanding who you are in Jesus Christ, understanding that you have changed position, that you have changed. You have changed. If you have not changed, you need to examine that thing again. If you have not changed, if your heart hasn't changed and you're still as hard on people as you used to be when you were in the world, and if you still are struggling with, with fear and struggling with depression and struggling with stuff, you need to look at that thing again. You need to go back and you need to say, God, wash me again. Wash me in your presence. Wash me in your love. Wash me in the word so that I can become out who you want me to be and not who I am right now. Because with every building block, there is a change. With every building block, as you are renewing your mind by reading the word and constantly finding out who God is. When I was, when I was 16 years old and I began to read the word, I knew my mind was being renewed as I read I knew I was coming to know Jesus in a different way, in a different level, in a different, a, a different experience than probably, once I did join the church, probably different than most people I knew. Because I had an experience with him. Once you've had an experience with Jesus, there is nothing in this world that can change you. There's nothing that can make you go backwards. There's nothing that will make you sin or, or want to sin. You won't even want to sin. Because you've been in the presence of a king. You've been in the presence of royalty. And guess what? You were chosen. Amen. You were chosen to be a part of that family. Wow. You got to know who you are. You're a royal priesthood. You're a priesthood. God's called you into ministry. I know it may not look like 
fivefold. It may not look like a lot of things, but sometimes you're just called to, to help the homeless. Sometimes you're just called to, to be a part of a, a, a pantry and, and to, to give out food and to go shopping and do all those different types of things. Sometimes you're just called to go up to the hospital and sit with people and just minister to them and read them the Bible and just talk to them for a little while. And that's your ministry. Some people are called to ministry of prayer. Some people are called to so many different things. But you're still a minister. Some people are minister to children. I knew, I knew that I knew when I came into the ministry that I was called to kids. I was called to the ministry of children. I knew that I, I loved it. I got giggly. I got excited every time I thought about being in the presence of the kids. I mean, my mind would just be clicking on different things I could do with them and different things I could do and go and, 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 and teach them. I just got so excited. I knew I had the call of ministry for kids in my life. And that's what you need to do. That's what you need to do. Go back and say, God, who am I? Who am I? What am I called to do in this world? What priesthood am I called to do? You are a holy nation. Don't let anybody tell you you're not holy just because you're in a situation that may not look very holy. Doesn't make you stop being holy just because you're in a mess. Jesus died and shed his blood so you, you would be holy. Just get out of it. Don't stay in it. One thing I love about God and I prayed that a little bit this morning, but I, I love about him is that he, he, will, he will love me in spite of me. How cool is that? I mean, he doesn't go away from me. I go away from him because I feel condemnation. But he never makes me feel condemned. He always makes me feel welcome. He always makes me feel loved. He always makes me feel, if, if it's anything else, that's not God. That's not God. You need to reject it just as quick as it comes and say, I cast down all imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God because the knowledge of God says that I am his child, and that he loves me, that he is my father. Cast that stuff down. Get rid of it just as quick as you can. Because I'm telling you, it will try to linger and it will try to define you. Don't be defined by negative things. Don't be defined by everything that's around you that's negative. You are defined by the word of God. You are defined by what God has said about you. Amen? You are his own special people. Oh, I love God. Every time I read this, I get empowered. Every time I read this, I know that I am in his control and that I am not in the enemy's control. Amen. And then no matter what he tries to do against me, I begin to recognize who I am. And that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You thought that you were here to grow up, get a job, buy a house, get old, and die. Okay, get married, have some kids, you know, add a few little things, natural things to this. And somewhere in there, we put God in there. In that, in that, in that, in that vision, in that, in that quest, in that journey, at little times, you know when you put them in there? When you were going through something and when it was hard. But while it was good, where was God? That is not what God intended for us. He intended for us to go from victory to victory to victory, even when we're going through valleys. It does not matter. We're still going to hit the victory. He intended for us to walk as his children of light. He intended for us to walk with confidence, assurity, uh, uh, just, just knowing beyond anything else that I am a child of God. Renewing of the mind, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. Who is Jesus? 
is the next one. So next devotional. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Let's go to John 14. Oops. John 14 and 6. It says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We got to know as we grow in our faith and we're building on our faith who Jesus is in our faith. Do you know how many religions say that Jesus is not the Son of God? And that he was a prophet. He was so many other things other than the son. Yeah. And that, I would say, help me out, Dave, I don't know. I would say all of them don't say that Jesus is the way to the Father. That Christianity is the only religion that declares that Jesus mm -hmm. is the way, right. Right. Yeah. the truth, yeah. Yeah. and the life. Yeah. Yeah. That he is the one that goes to eternity, that takes us to eternity. Yeah. They got all kinds, of, I've been studying on religions and, and uh, I'm not finished the book, but I, I'm amazed at some of the things that are told to people about Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. That when you realize that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And you realize the sacrifices that he paid for you. For you. He didn't do it for himself. He didn't do it so that he could, he could uh, I don't know, uh, leave a legacy or any, anything other than because the father told him to and because he loved his father and because he loved his father, he loved each, and one, each one of us. And so he made the conscious decision to come and to die and to suffer for all of us. That is something that will build your faith. When things come into your life and you recognize Jesus and you recognize the sacrifice that he made for me, when I was dealing and I still deal and I, I'm victorious over diabetes. Amen. And when I deal, I think about the blood. I think about Jesus. It builds my faith. I, I, it reminds me that I allow, I told Mary Lou one time, I said, I want you to imagine, and I have to do this all the time. I, I, I want you to imagine you standing at the cross, and Jesus is on the cross, and you're, you have transfigured yourself back in time. And you're looking up at Jesus and the drops of blood that are dropping on your head because it was the blood that was shed that made me healed. It is the stripes that he bore that made me healed. And so I allow that blood to drip upon my head, but it ends up being just a total covering of his blood. And I allow myself to be covered by the blood of Jesus. And I realize and I know that I'm healed of every infirmity and every sickness and every disease that would try to attach itself to my body. I am healed. I am the healed. I am the whole. Because it builds my faith and recognizing that just exactly who Jesus is. Amen. He is the resurrection and the life. And not only that, he got off that cross. And he went and he ascended up into heaven. And he sits there right now. Right now. I can see him. He's sitting there right now by next to the throne or ne next to God. And he is literally making intercession for me and you and everybody else in the body of Christ, that his body will not fail, that his body will not 
faint and fall away. His body will not give up their faith, but he, they will stand with their faith strong and assured that, that I am not giving up, that I recognize exactly what Jesus has done for me. He redeemed me back to the Father so that I could go into the throne room of God and I can be able to boldly come in there and ask whatever I want because I know that if it's according to his will, because our hearts are connected, I'm not going to ask anything stupid. I'm not going to ask for a Rolls Royce. I'm just not going to ask for a Rolls Royce. I'm personally, I know, maybe you want one. I don't want one. I don't need one. But I do want a Yukon. So, <laughs> I need one. <laughs> I need one. Amen, amen. So I can go boldly into the throne room of God and ask for my Yukon. I can say, God, thank you, Jesus, that the Yukon is on its way. I already got it. I already claimed it. And thank you, Jesus, I receive it by his blood and by his sacrifice and the fact that you made it possible for me to go into the throne room of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. You got to know who you are. You got to know who you are. You got to renew your mind on who you are and who Jesus is. And because what he, do, he did for us and so that we can literally walk into the throne room of God. And I do say literally. Come on now. Literally, 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 literally. It ain't figuratively. It is not figuratively. It is literally. When I am in the presence of God in my prayer room, I walk into the throne room of God. I don't go, I don't go timidly and I don't go, oh, I don't know what to do. No, I am his child. And I can walk into the throne room of God. And I can ask for what I want. I can sit at his feet and talk to him for a little while. I can do whatever I want to do in the throne room because it's my daddy's house. Amen? Amen. Amen. Who is the father? It's the next building block. Who is the father? So you know y'all are going to have to tune in on Wednesdays. <laughs> if you're not getting the, the, um, the devotionals right now, you need to find out how to get it. And give, make sure you get us your email so that we can send you the devotionals. Who is the father? Let's go to Exodus 3 and 14. <clears throat> this is good. I like this one. <laughs> Exodus 3, 14. <clears throat> this is, and God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. I am. That says everything. That says everything. God just is. I am that I am. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Let's go to, uh, I love it, Revelations 22 and 13. Revelation is 22 and 13. You know what I love about, or I really enjoy about this night, is that Pastor Tommy asked me, he said, you, you're, not, you're not getting ready for, to talk at all. You don't really, you like printing off pages and, and doing all this highlighting and, and reading and just getting all prepared for this. I said, I don't know. There's something about a free flow of the Spirit going on on, on this Sunday night. Amen. That I, I, I just know he's going to talk, and I know he's going to say exactly what he's supposed to say tonight. Amen. And, and, and I, don't, I don't have to be worried about that. And I, I, I love it. I love it. Amen. Let me make sure. 22. Amen. Amen. 22.13. It says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Amen. Amen. Man, you got you to get a revelation of that. You got to get a revelation of that. You got to meditate on that for a minute. Because if you just read over that, you won't see that. You won't get a revelation of God. You won't get a revelation of the Father. Who is your Father? Who, who is He? He is the Alpha. He was in the beginning. He is the end. 
He's already created that. He already knows the end from the beginning. He knows that. He created everything. Even you. And everything that was around you. He created that. And when you make him Lord over your life, he protects you. Like a bird does his, 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 their children. <laughs> like a bear loves their cubs. Won't let anything hurt you or harm you. Yeah. Things come, but they don't have to stay. And they don't have to overwhelm you. And they don't have to, they don't have to take you out. They don't have to do any of that. Because you have to know who you are. You got to know you're the king's kid. You got to know that you are royalty, that you are the chosen one, that you are a child of the king. You are a child of God. You are a child of the father. And he calls you his child. He calls you, he calls you his children. And I love that. I mean, it's like Pastor Tommy says, you know, I want to act like a kid again. He sees me as his child. He doesn't see me as his adult. Though he wants us to mature and though he wants us to grow up, he never wants us to grow up so much that we think we got it. That we don't have to come to him and say, God, I don't know what I'm doing. God, show me the way. He says, but in all my ways, I will acknowledge him. And he shall direct my path. I don't want to direct my path. I don't want to put my hand in the mess. Because I'll make a mess of it. Every time. Every time. And so I've learned to get myself out of my mess. And hurry up. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the one I haven't written yet is, who is the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. And that's the last building block. It's not the last. We got so many building blocks. It's not even funny. I just chose those five. <laughs> so many things that we have to renew our mind in and really recognize who we are. That we're powerful. Oh, yeah. We are so powerful. Oh, yeah. But we can't abuse the power. Yeah. We can't abuse the, 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 the liberty that we have. We can't abuse it. We have to give it right back to him so that he can teach us how, how, to, how to wield the power yeah. and how to, how, to, how, to, how, to, how to demonstrate the power, how to, how to walk in the power. You know, because people, you know, we talk about people a long time ago, you know, in the early 1900s and, and, the, and the revivals that went on. And I looked at their life, you know, that's something in the minister's class that you were required to read, is God's generals. And, and, and I look at their life and the sacrifices that they made. And I look at the power that was willed from their hands. I'm just like, wow. I, I thought about that like that with Jesus. That Jesus, I look at the power that this man of God willed in the earth and he, how, he, how he, he just, he did such signs and wonders and miracles. I mean, just with a word, just with a touch, just with a thought. He did it. He just, he just did it. And I was in awe of him. And, I, you know, another thing about the, about the Holy Spirit is that, you realize that he didn't start that until he received the Holy Spirit? What makes the church think that they could do anything without the Holy Spirit? You can't do anything without the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about being baptized. He went and got baptized, immersed in the power. He, wasn't, he didn't want a, a, a trinkle, a little, little, little dab will do you. He went and he got immersed in the water. He got immersed in the presence of God. And he knew the call that he had in his life. From a little boy, he knew. And then when he began to walk in that thing, but he knew he needed the power. He needed the Holy Spirit in his life. He needed the Holy Spirit to be able to do the miracles in which God had called him to do and to perform. We can't do miracles without the Holy Spirit. We can't do signs and wonders without the Holy Spirit. Great things are not going to happen in your life without the Holy Spirit. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit tonight, you need to seek him like you never have before and say, God, I want more of you. I want the Holy Spirit. 
Let's go to John 14 and 26. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It says about the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. He is our helper. He is our comforter. He is our guide. He teaches us everything that we need to know in order to be successful. We have to renew our mind to that and understand that we cannot do this without the Holy Spirit. That we can't do this without his guidance and his help. He is called to be here. Jesus sent him here so he could help us. So how dare us think that we could do this in our own power? I look at churches today and they don't even acknowledge the power of the Holy Spirit. That's right. They don't even acknowledge the Holy Spirit as, as, as an entity of God that co has come to this earth for us. It's amazing. I am amazed. I've been praying for them because I think about the pastors that are teaching this stuff. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm, I got the fear of God for you. Because of one thing that he said, you know, there's one thing that you can deny, but you can't deny the Holy Spirit. You can't talk about him. You can't tell you. I don't know what makes him. Maybe Pastor Thomas can school me on that. Or, or even Bishop. <laughs> I don't know what makes. Because, you know, he says you, you, can, you can deny or even not deny, but you can talk about Jesus. You can talk about the Son of Man or the Son of God, but you cannot talk about the Holy Spirit. That is the one thing that can send you to hell. And I'm thinking, why? Wow. That's powerful. That's powerful. That's why I pray. I pray for these pastors. I pray for them, and I say, God, show them the scriptures. Show them what, what is said about the Holy Spirit and why the Holy Spirit was sent here. And why it was here to empower us to be what God intended for us to be. Not what we want to be. We can plan all day long. Mandy is about the biggest planner I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> she is a planner extraordinaire. <laughs> she will write it out. I, I would love to look at her notes right now. <laughs> I love it. I love it because in certain areas that is such a plus. <laughs> it's such a, a good thing to have. But God doesn't want you to plan your life like that. He wants you to be totally open to him and not yourself. He wants you to hear his voice. He wants you to spend time with him. He wants you to draw near. And the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you, and he's going to reveal to you, and he's going to talk to you, and he's going to tell you things that are to come. He's going to tell you about what God wants. He's going to tell you about what you should be doing. He's going to be telling you and talking to you. And I'm telling you, if you're a part of this church and God's telling you that, that I am called to this, I am called to this, you need to be letting your pastors know that you are called to this. I am called to this because we want to we want to equip you for the calling. Because let me tell you, I know, you know, there are wolves out there that will eat your lunch. They will eat you. They don't care nothing about you. All the knowledge, you know, and all the Jesus, you know. So what? They don't care. And they've got other knowledge and, and other things that they can throw at you and, 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 and make you feel this small when you go out there and try to talk about Jesus. But you're here to be equipped for the battle, equipped to, to go out there and talk about Jesus, equipped to be able to do what you're called to do, equipped to be a pastor, equipped to be a, an evangelist, a teacher. You're called to be something. You know, maybe not the five-fold ministry, but you're called to be something. God has put it on the inside of you. He's put it on this. And when these questions are answered, Life is more secure and stable. 
when you know about the renewing of your mind and you know who I am, who you are in Christ, or who you are, and then who you are in Christ Jesus, and you know who Jesus is, you know who the Father is, you know who the Holy Spirit is, and I'm telling you, unless you study these things and really study them out, you'll always keep floundering. You'll always keep struggling. But when you know that you know that you know that you know, and nobody can deter you and nobody can change you, nobody can turn you around, you got it. Amen. You got it. And I'm telling you, your faith will not be deterred. Your faith will not, then nobody could tell you any differently. And so, but it takes study of the word. It takes study. It takes preparing. It takes, it takes equipping of your heart, equipping of your, of your spirit, equipping, equipping, equipping yourself. And that's, that's study, that's study, that's study, that's study, that's spending time with God. It's crying sometimes, it's laughing, it's jumping up and down, it's acting foolish when other people think you're crazy. That's all right. Amen. I know a lot of people think I'm crazy, but that's all right. Yeah. That's all right. It's okay to be crazy because you know what? We're peculiar. Yeah. <laughs> We're peculiar people yeah. called by God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Building blocks, one step at a time. Yeah. One step at a time. Yeah. Start today. Start today. If you started last year, if you started three years ago, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. You never stop building. You never stop growing. Because you know what? Life. Life just happens. Life, life drains you. Life takes out a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And, and, and sometimes you have to put it back in. <laughs> put it back in. Put it back in. Put it back in. Sometimes you have to remind yourself over again who Jesus is. Sometimes you have to remind yourself over and over who, who the Father is. Who the, who, well, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Okay, yeah, 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 Holy Spirit. Sometimes you have to remind yourself over and over again. Building blocks. You got to keep building the blocks. And what are you doing? You're laying a foundation. You're laying the foundation. And you're building a house. <laughs> who talks about building the house? And that, isn't that uh, John Revere? Which series is that? Uh, driven, by eternity. driven by Eternity. Building a custom-built house. <laughs> Building a custom-made home. I tell, and, and that's what God wants to do through you. Yeah. He's building a custom-made just for his glory. Just for his glory. Not for you. Not for you. <laughs> You're going to get the benefits. You're going to get the benefits. They're good benefits, too. Yeah. It's like you're healed. Yeah. Amen. Uh, you're, 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 you're redeemed. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, well, yeah. You're just all kinds of things. You're prosperous. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I mean, the list goes on and on of the, of the benefits that come by just saying, it's not my will that v- that's being done, but your will, Father. Yeah. It's not my way. It's your way. It's not mine. I have to say it every day, guys, yeah. every day, every day, because it's not coming fast enough for me. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> not coming fast enough, but you know what? Every day I stand on the firm foundation of God's word. I stand firmly upon what he has taught me of who I am, who Jesus is. <laughs> I'm renewing my mind every day, every day. Every day, I'm renewing my mind. I get in the presence of God. I go into his throne room, and I say, God, here I am again. He says, welcome, daughter. Come on in. Come on in. Sit, sit down. Sit on down. And I sit at his feet, and I just bask in his presence, and I bask in his love. And I just say, God, talk to me for a little while. Help me out because I'm feeling overwhelmed with all of this. And he just says, okay. I can handle it. Maybe you can't. But I can handle it. But you got to give it to me. You got to let me hold you. You got to let me guide you. Because if you don't, you're going to keep being frustrated and you're going to want to quit. And you're going to quit. And, and I can't afford for you to do that. <laughs> Last story. I remember the day when my daughter went home. And it was one of the days in that, in that year. She went home on... Uh, leap year, 
in 2004 on February 29th on leap, on the day, leap, leap day? <laughs> yeah, okay. And, uh, and I, 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 we had this walk-in closet and I would go into the walk-in closet, I think just about every day, and I would sit under the clothes, because <laughs> to me, that was like the covering of God. And I would sit under the clothes, and I would ask him why, every day for about a year. For about a year, I cried every day in that closet, and he let me. He said, come on in, daughter, come on in. And he would let me sit there, and he'd let me complain, and he'd let me with all my questions and all my just issues about, about the whole thing, and he just, but he ministered to me. Every time I would go in that throne room, he would minister to me, and he would, he would love me, and he would hold me, and he would comfort me, and he would just, wow. Nobody can tell me that God's not real. Right. Even in the midst of tragedy, even in the midst of, of what I, I don't see, is fair or right. I saw him because I purposed my heart to look for him. I purposed my heart to find him. I needed him. There wasn't nothing back there that could help me. If I, if, I, if, 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 I, if I stayed in my dysfunction, in my, in my hurt, and in my pain, what was that going to leave me other than probably an institution? Yeah. I've been crying, I've still been crying after almost 15 years. Mm -hmm. He loved me in the midst of that. Yeah. He taught me who I was in Christ. Mm -hmm. And after a year, he said, that's enough, daughter. <laughs> I went in that closet thinking it was going to be okay. And he said, okay, it's time to stop coming in the closet. It's time for you to, to, to get with life. Time for, you to, time to, for you to get busy. I need you in ministry. I need you to stop crying. I dried my tears. And every now and then, with times like this, I may cry. But I don't cry about that anymore. Hallelujah. Because he reassured me even the day of where she was. And that she is in a very wonderful place. And she is doing amazing things. And she is running around with Jesus. And lots of kids. All the kids that got aborted. All the kids that, 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 that left this earth too soon. She's taking good, good care of them. So I would like to tell any mom that made the mistake of aborting a child or made a mistake of any sort like that and or a or, or child left here too early, Dominique is loving them so much. They, they are so amazingly loved <laughs> and they're having crazy fun. She had the weirdest way of doing the craziest stuff. I'm telling you. One more story. <laughs> we, we used to work in the daycare together. And she had the two-year-olds and I had the three-year-olds. And we had the combined classes at the end of the day because most of the kids were leaving and, and, uh, and they were ready to shut down stuff and all that kind of stuff. So we combined classes and I always was in her class. I had to go in there, and I let her be in charge because she was the craziest. So she, she would keep those kids busy. And you know the song, um, Five Little Monkeys Jumping on the Bed? <laughs> she would sing that song to those kids and jump around there like a monkey and fall off the bed. <laughs> and she would just... She would do the craziest things, and those kids would be running around laughing and enjoying themselves. And she would be on the floor, and she would just have the greatest time with them. And I see her doing that in heaven. She had such a love for kids. And I say that story because I want you to know 
that even in the midst of your sorrow, even in the midst of your, I don't understand why that happened. I don't understand everything that God does or why. But I trust him with everything. And it is a part of my life that I have to go through. But I get to testify about it all the time. And I encourage other moms and I encourage other people that have, that have had children that have gone on to heaven. And I get a chance to say, it's going to be all right. If you hold on to his hand and maybe go in the closet under the clothes, you're going to be all right. Just let him comfort you and let him. Don't run the opposite direction. Run straight toward Jesus. Don't you go any other way, but you go straight to him because he has all the answers. He does indeed have all the answers. And even if his answer is, you got to trust me. He's gonna, it's going to be all right because he's going to give you a peace that passes all understanding. And you won't understand why you have peace in the midst of the crazy turmoil of life. But you're going to have peace. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.